thank you all for taking the time out to join us this evening. Uh, I'd just like to talk to you tonight about our upcoming city of Fort Worth project. Um, I'm one of the project managers in the transportation and public works department in the capital delivery team. And I'm the PM for the project, the intersection improvements proposed for Alta Mesa Boulevard and Crowley Road. Um, as Jeff uh, said earlier, and I don't know if some, some of you may not have been on, um, we, we are, <clears throat> excuse me, we are recording this presentation. Um, we're gonna upload the recording to the Fort Worth, Texas uh, .gov uh, project website for this, pay, for this project, um, along with the recording. Um, we'll try to make this format the next best thing to being uh, at an in-person meeting. So again, thank you for coming. Uh, tonight's agenda, um, in this presentation, I'll be talking about the project really as a whole, providing some background, discussing the scope and our anticipated schedule. The construction staging details, which I'm sure my, many of you are very interested in, um, will be you know finalized with the selection of the contractor, uh, but we will give you an overview of what we can expect during the construction. Um, for any of your questions that I don't answer during this presentation, which is about 10 to 15 minutes, there will be an opportunity to ask questions at the end, and uh, we will provide contact information at the last slide as well. So plus on the project website. So tonight um, with me helping is uh, Douglas Mikeworth. He's from AECOM, He's the design consultant for the project. Um, he'll be uh, able to help answer questions at the end if needed or uh, and so forth. And also Jeffrey Allen uh, is our communication specialist. He's also attending. Um, and he, like he said, let's please, let's hold the questions until after the presentation and then we'll open it up we'll, for you to unmute and ask questions. And also Doug and Jeff will monitor the chat box for questions during anything that you wanna uh, provide during the chat box, so thank you. Your attendance here uh, indicates you already know the location of the project, but it, it helps me to begin with a high level of view uh, and to zoom in. This is the location of this project in Fort Worth on Crowley Road, about a mile south of the Reagan Memorial and 1.6 miles on Alta Mesa from, from Purple Heart Trail 35W. The intersection is located in Council District 8. And this is an overhead shot of the existing conditions. Um, Crowley Road, as you know, I'm sure, is a text dot route with three heavily used through lanes in each direction. There's currently a single dedicated left turn lane in each direction. There's high demand, particularly in peak hours at this intersection. Uh, additional left turn capacity to westbound Alta Mesa and northbound Crowley would be beneficial and it is available within the existing right of way um, with the removal of the existing median. As you can see, the medians here are fairly wide that uh, we can utilize. Um, that's the, really the genesis of the project, um, to improve the capacity with a limited budget without needing to expand on the right of way, because uh, you know, all the owners on the, you know, it's very difficult and tedious and long process to, not tedious, but it's a long process to acquire property and so forth. So this, this stays within the existing right of way. The goals of the project are to enhance, again, the peak, the peak operation through the intersection by making improvements in left turn capacity while staying within the existing right of way. Um, they focus, the, the improvements focus on left turn movements. Um, along with these lane modifications, the traffic signal structures will be replaced and signal timing will be optimized. Uh, another important aspect of this project is increased pedestrian mobility with the addition of 
left turn, or I'm sorry, with the addition of ADA accessible ramps and crosswalks. The funding for this project was included in the 2018 bond program, which was authorized by the residents of Fort Worth in May of 2018. In the design plan, we will utilize the existing, again, I'm repeating myself a lot, but uh, I'm just, we're gonna utilize the existing medium space to create additional left turn lanes. This gives us the most economical improvement for mobility through the intersection without disruption. Um, at each of these two locations at the arrows, a portion of the existing raised median will be removed and an additional left turn lane will be constructed, creating dual left turn lanes at these, lo these two locations. That is westbound Alta Mesa to northbound Crowley, which is shown here. And here is northbound Crowley to westbound Alta Mesa. North is up here, as we see on the arrow, it's typical. Um, these improvements require larger light pole support structures with longer mast arms in order to orient the lane or the signal heads in the proper location with respect to the lanes that they regulate. Um, so the additional length of the mast arm and additional load requires uh, increase in foundation. This one they already. Bradley, do we lose you? Bradley. Well, Jeffrey, if we lost him, this is Doug Mikeworth with AECOM. If we lost Bradley for a moment. Oh, I'm oh, here. Sorry. There he is. He's back oh, now. There okay. he is. He's back. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> it, it, uh, that happened last time I did this as well. So I, um, so when the construction begins, well, median will be demolished and subgrade prepared and compacted and then rebars placed with the new concrete. Um, Median work, as you can tell, as you can probably imagine, um, it's going to be the most impactful construction activity, impactful to to, to uh, travelers, um, users of the road. We've got to create a safe work zone for the construction people, um, and we have to maintain that. So we need a this type of work requires a safety buffer, and and, you know, and so it's it's inevitable that there will be lane closure uh, for this work. Um, safety is paramount, but it is in everyone's interest to minimize the duration of these closures. So we will work hard to bring every detail to bear on minimizing these delays. Um, and another problem is concrete needs to cure. Um, you know, we try to schedule activities to save the overall duration, but uh, again, there will be lane reductions probably during construction, but more on that in just a bit. Um, so some additional notes on the project schedule. The design has been completed and the activities required for permitting the work on TxDOT property are nearly complete, virtually complete. Um, permitting has been really the main delay in the start of this project, but those issues are now pretty much resolved. So we anticipate that um, this is not going to be a, a no longer be a, an obstacle to us. The project is in the bid phase currently. The bids are due March 24th. So 
Usually it takes about 90 days or so. We need to get council approval of the contract and get all the signatures um, taken care of and all the insurance and all the requirements that are needed for government project. Um, and but during this time, we usually begin working with the selected contractor on the overall schedule and other material approvals and so forth. So we once the contract is executed and approved, the contractor can order the the long lead items um, like poles and mass terms. But once he mobilizes, he has four months of about four months of work to um, get to substantially complete. These four months is probably uh, the part of the project that uh, you will notice as the public traveler. You know, this will be the most impactful part of the project. So um, we anticipate that that we will be complete with this project done by the end of the year. So four months is really the duration that we're looking at here. So the estimated cost is 720,000. Um, we will perform the work during the off peak hours, like between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. Uh, we are constructing net left turn lanes when we are constructing them, well, the adjacent lane must be closed as a buffer um, to the to the to the for the work. So, uh, primarily for safety. Um, so, left turn movements will always be accommodated, and we anticipate so. But we this requirement is going to reduce a through lane probably from three to two. Um, but we will work with the contractor and TechStot to determine the the lane configurations during each phase of the construction. I'm just trying to say that there probably will be, there will be, you will notice the work out there. So um, if you're traveling in the area. So similarly, the barrier free ramp construction also will require adjacent lane to be closed for safety again. Um, gee, that was fast. <laughs> As we move forward, I, I guess I'll share my contact with information with you. This is this is it here. Um, again, we we've been looking forward to this project for a long time, and um, it's a key improvement for the residents of Fort Worth. And uh, I, I I appreciate your listening. Uh, I'm an engineer, not a speaker, but I'll I'll I appreciate your so I appreciate your patience, and uh, I'll try to answer any questions that. You have at this point, um, just unmute yourself and uh, go ahead. What effect will this have on Edgecliff Village? Um, I, I, uh, what do you, um, let's see not familiar with that quite frankly um but it's i would imagine that the three lanes of through traffic will be down to two lanes in some directions at at certain times during the project all the all the uh, access to businesses will be maintained um all the accesses to other um entrances to subdivisions or or whatever will not be will be maintained during the construction um I, I'm not sure if I am answering your question correctly. Um, is there specifically anything that I can that require that you're going to need to know about? Or okay, the lanes north and southbound on Crowley Road will be reduced from three to two. Is that right? Let me see if I can. Oops. Let's try to. In all likelihood, when we're working on these on these left turn lanes, we were going to need to close the lane. So we'll need to keep a left turn lane available, and and so that would only leave two lanes left. So they're probably going to go. I would anticipate it would go from three to two, um, and then with the left turn lane, 
because right now we have three through lanes and, and a left turn lane. So um, it would go to two in a left turn lane. Um, this is how I see that this work gets done here at the uh, medians on both Alta Mesa and at Crowley. Um, and then when we when we work on the curb ramps, um, I would try to maintain two two lanes in each direction as or two lanes through in each each way as well. Um, but I I don't see a way. You know, we we could consider reducing lanes widths, but I don't think that that's going to fly with TechStat. So um, that's why I'm I'm saying that during the peak hours or during the not peak hours, uh, the nine to four. And then sometimes there will be late concrete curing, which we'd have to leave up overnight, the, the closures. Uh, but those details, we, we're going to have messaging signs available uh, at, at, the, uh, at each of the four um, legs and to try to keep the public informed as to the upcoming uh, traffic pattern switches all the time. So uh, plus on our website, we will also be updating that when key traffic switches come. Um, usually we we get the final traffic control plan when we get the contractor and we and, and the contractor, we have to see how he's going to do his means and methods and how he wants to approach the project. And but but um, so the, the fine details, I can't guarantee at this point, but anyway, um, I don't know if that explains it, but to you, Bradley, these are only these are only temporary lane closures. So we're not permanently reducing lanes, correct? It's just during that construction. I'm sorry, it's during yeah. just the construction period, the four month period when we're um, when we're when we're doing the work, right? So this will have uh, a significant impact on ingress and egress to Edgecliff Three, which is the west side of Crowley Road. North of Alta Mesa. Um, it might in that in that it might back traffic may back up going the southbound Crowley Road traffic. Is that I guess that's my uh, we're we're not going to block any of your en entrances or exits, but I guess the traffic during peak times may back up. I don't know if that's kind of what you're getting at or. Um, yeah. Yeah, people will. Yeah. Okay. We try to, I mean, if it gets really bad, I mean, we work with uh, the TechStot traffic control people as well for Crowley and, and they're very sensitive to that. And we will try to minimize that if there's anything that we can possibly do. Um, I can't guarantee anything right at this moment. I don't know, Doug, do you have any comments that you want to add or did I explain it poorly? <laughs> um, no, I think you explained it fairly well and, and you just need to keep in mind that during the peak traffic hours before 9 a.m. each morning and after 4 p.m. each afternoon, the maximum number of lanes that can remain open are going to remain open. The contractor only has from 9 a.m. in the morning to 4 p.m. in the afternoon to do his work. And that's to avoid the peak traffic volumes. And right, that answers my question. Much, yeah, maintain as much through traffic as I can. Thank you, Doug. Also, if you're a call-in user and I muted you at the beginning of the um, presentation because of background noise, you can hit star six to unmute if you'd like to ask a question. This project, um, because it's on Textile right of way, we had to get a local, it's called a LOSA, we call it a LOSA, it's a local owned uh, 
what is this local owned service agreement or something that so we need to we need to, to do that process with TxDOT and it's a new process for them. So we are all learning at the time and it did not go as as quickly as we hope. So this project has been delayed quite a long time for that reason, but we have that resolved now. So I know that some of you might have been uh, concerned about, I mean, have been aware of this project for a long time, but that's the reason for this last um, um, delay, but we're, it's, it's in bid now, so we have a lot of interest in from from contractors. So that I'm I'm optimistic that we're gonna have a good project here. So uh, anything anyone else can please if you have any questions. Uh, could I ask a question? It it appears that the um, a lot of the uh, interruption of traffic is going to be the barrier free ramps when they're being constructed. You said you'd be closing the uh, Right lanes effectively, and would that be only between four uh, nine and four? I I hope so. I my concern is that um, I think we can do that. that I, I believe we can. Be, my concern is that we we have enough when we when the contractor say opens the lanes back up to full capacity for rush hour that the we have to guard the, you know, any kind of work that's been done, like fresh concrete or um, other, you know, it's kind of a fine gradient that has to be done there, uh, grading. And so we just, so maybe we can do that with just um, physical barriers that don't, um, that don't really interrupt the lane of traffic. Um, I think we can do that to keep keeping the full service open, but the worst cases we we may have to reduce the lane somewhat to to leave a little bit of a uh, just so that the the stray tire doesn't run over fresh concrete. You know what I mean? And it's very uh, it happens more than you would think. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what do you do? You have anything that to clarify that for me, Doug? Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I think you covered it. You know, there's when they go in there and they remove the existing ramp and get ready to replace it. Of course, once they replace it, there'll be some fresh concrete there that, as Brad said, we don't want uh, new tire tracks across. <laughs> uh, but then, you know, when they when they make their saw cuts and remove the barrier free ramp, uh, there may need to be a little bit extra buffer area coned off. Uh, just so that uh, while the subgrades being prepared for the placement of the new concrete for the barrier free ramp, there's going to be a, you know, an eight or nine inch drop off from the surface of the existing concrete to the base of the, of where the new barrier free ramp's going to go. So for a short period of time, there may be a little bit of a extra area coned off. I'm sure the contractor is going to do everything he can to minimize you know, blocking any through traffic or diminishing any lanes, uh, if at all possible. Again, there's, you know, it's it's construction. It's going to be a uh, right. little messy at times, and it's going to disrupt a few things for short periods. But uh, and we just have to kind of bite the bullet and, and uh, bear it, and keep in mind that it's going to be better when we get through. And hopefully, well, thank you. you know, be a minimized impact. Thank you for your question. That's it, that's a good point with the the the, the drop off when that happens when we cut stuff out, and it will happen on the median as well. So um, that's a bad thing if a car, you know, tire uh, goes down into that. It's kind of a, a problem. So thank you for your question, though.
Um, I did a similar project to similar in the, in that the signal poles that we need to get for this project uh, took quite a long time. Now that was during the coming out of the pandemic phase and there was a lot of uh, back up on the borders. And so that's the other thing that we're going to try to mitigate is any kind of procurement delays for these um, long uh, poles. They're, they have, the uh, mass arms have to be longer because it's it's another lane wide. So the mass arms must be longer and, and there's special order sometimes. So we have to, I think we'll, I think we're past most of those problems now, but that's my only other thing that we're trying to anticipate and get ahead of. So this, I don't know, I thought that was important to say. <laughs> um, anyway, any other questions that I can, let's see. Lizette, are you here? No, are you on the phone? My boss is Lizette. I, I see there's some call in users and I was just wondering if one of them was her, but um, that's fine. Bradley, we do have a comment in, in chat now. Will, will we have another public meeting once the contractor has been selected, selected and we have a actual construction date? I don't anticipate that we will. Um, we'll, like I say, we'll try to, we'll, we not try, but we will <laughs> um, have a lot of uh, signage out there that's going to give plenty of warning. The required two two week warning. Uh, the contractors at all times and and before traffic shifts or starts of construction plus the website we're going to be updating the website frequently um, as we go um, if you want to email me your email i can have a list and email to you a notification of when we're after we uh, Get the contractor on board when he's planning on starting. I can do that as well. Um, but I don't think we're going to have another public meeting. Brad, could you put your um, email address and contact information back up well, good, for a minute? Good, good idea. Yeah. Plus this, this is also on the website as well. Um, this project has its own pages as most projects do. So um, it's quite a few projects on the website there. I think it's in the district eight. Um, I think the link might be at the district eight um, webpage as well. So. It's also on the flyer that uh, you sent us. Oh, great. Yeah, Jeff is Jeff is our communications specialist and he puts those things together. It's quite. It's quite an, it's quite an effort. <laughs> so appreciate that. You can also, if you're on the city's website, just type Alta Mesa in the search box and it's, um, it's typically the 1st 1 that pops up. If there's any more questions, I'm happy to take some. Um, we did have another comment in chat from uh, Margaret that says, just remember the outcome will be great. I promise I didn't pay Margaret okay. to say that, <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> it will be better. It will be good. Um, AECOM is the top 
a top designer. So they, they, uh, I used to work there myself. So I, <laughs> I know that they put out a quality product. So um, I'm sure that it's going to really help the intersection quite a bit. So um, it's not, nothing's perfect, I guess, but um, this will help quite a bit. So in recap, contracts are to be let this month, construction to start next month for four months. Is that about right? Oh, no. Um, it's going to be opening the bids March 24th. So usually we get the low bidder and then we have to verify that he meets all, their, all the criteria uh, with his submittal. And then we we have to get council approval for, for the appropriate to appropriate the funds and uh, to um, select. Well, really, to the pro, the funds are appropriate, but to so to bring this contract to um, they have to approve the contract basically. So yeah, they ex then we execute the contract and then so that process between the time the contractor has an executed contract and the time that he submits his bid. Is probably about 60 to 90 days. So we're looking at August to start the construction. I guess I should have been clearer on that part. So July or August, I'd say. Brad, can you put that slide back up that has that uh, kind of a no, timeline on it? Find that, find that um, slide here. That's why I say four months from August, so we'll be finished by um, Christmas. So hopefully we can have them start, you know, in in early July, you know, that would be the best case if everything goes smoothly and, and I don't see why it wouldn't, but um, yeah, so there also is a little bit of a period that he's gonna have to procure the material. So the, the uh, signals, uh, so we're gonna, but we will finish by the end of the year. So that's my, that's my goal. My 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 feeling right now, my uh, best my best guess. Yeah. It does take a while. That's I understand. It's it's. Um, I wish it. What's faster? Well, I for one appreciate the update. Thank you. You're welcome. Sure. Does anyone else have questions before we wrap up for the evening? Thank you for conducting the meeting. Appreciate it. Oh, it's our pleasure. Thank you. Yes, Joe, we can get you a copy of the presentation or a PDF of it at least. And this recording will also be on the project website so you can watch the whole thing uh, if you wish. That way you could hear questions. Uh, your preference. Uh, if you want to send either Bradley or I a private message with your email, we can uh, make sure that would we, that could happen. <laughs>